All right. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Brenda Meller joining you again, again for another edition of Social Media Pie and delighted to introduce my special guest for today, Cynthia Barron. Cynthia, how are you doing today? Fantastic. How are you? Doing really well, thank you. And, and Cynthia and I were just having a little bit of conversation behind the scenes as we were getting started here today. And I was trying to remember where we met. And Cynthia, for me, you're like a celebrity. I feel like I see you everywhere. I've known you forever. And I was trying to kind of backtrack. And um, you shared, you, you think it was from Inform Troy that we first met or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because they had the, the monthly meetings and we're both members of Inform and um, we we met there. Yeah. yeah. And then I saw you speaking at, was it Tech Town Detroit? It was a small business conference or what was that event? Do you remember? Was, um, I was holding a training that day and you That's stopped fine. in. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been a huge fan of yours for forever. Um, oh, and <laughs> and I'm so delighted. We were, we were talking kind of, uh, you know, before jumping on the session here today, and I was pulling up her resources and websites and, and whatnot, too. And maybe what we could do as we we're um, getting started here to say, Cynthia, is I'll have you introduce yourself before I before I turn the floor over to you to have you do that, I wanna just welcome anybody who's watching us on LinkedIn Live or Facebook Live. Thank you guys so much for, for joining us here. We're gonna be having a great conversation here today. And Cynthia has chosen the topic, if you're not changing the world, what are you doing with your life? So we're gonna be coming up in that in just a minute here. But what I love it is if you are watching, if you could drop us a comment below and just let us know where in the world are you watching from? Are you in Metro Detroit? Are you in Michigan in some other area? Are you in another state or country in the world? I'm in my home office in Fraser, Michigan. And Cynthia, where are you at? Are you Royal home Lake office? Michigan. Uh -huh. Royal Oak, Michigan. So we're we're a half and a skip away from each other we here. Are. <laughs> so if you could, Cynthia, why don't you um, take a minute or two and describe for people if they haven't heard of you, um, who is Cynthia Barnes and, and what what's your business all about? Sure. Cynthia Barnes is a devoted uh, daughter, sister, um, auntie of the year, world's greatest auntie. <laughs> Elizabeth. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of the National Association of Women Sales Professionals. We are a member-based organization of 15,000 women who sell B2B services in male-dominated industries. And we have two goals, one to provide our members with the network and training created by women for women to get to the top 1% and to build community around what it's like being a woman in sales. Awesome. And 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 I was just commenting when we were talking in the, the pre-show, I, I was like, do you work for any? I'm like, wait, do you create that organization? I mean, it's huge, right? This is a national organization. It is. It is. Yeah, we're actually global. And I did I did found it in 2016. Yes. That's great. Well, I, I was telling you, too, I, I, I've i heard of an, an AWSP not just from you. I'm hearing it from other people as well. And and I put the website up on, I hope you don't mind doing this right now. Cynthia. <laughs> I yeah. put the web um, page up on screen and then a screen capture of the, the website as well in case anyone's interested in learning more about that organization and checking it out. Yeah. Um, so so definitely check that out. So uh, so when we booked this session, and I think we were already in the, the COVID pandemic days of, of life, if you will, yes. right? Um, and I said, pick anything you want to talk about. Um, and and you said, hey, let's talk about if you're not changing the world, what are you doing with your life? So to kind of kick this subject off for us today, why is this an important subject for you? I think that the majority of people fail to realize their true power and their strength. And if we think about Gandhi, um, if we think about Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Oprah, they're all one person and they have 24 hours in the day, just like we do. And they have accomplished amazing things. Love it. Mm -hmm. So what I want people to think about is why not me? Mm -hmm. Why am I not changing the world? If I have everything that it takes, if I have DNA to make positive changes, what am I doing with my life if I'm not changing the world? So wait a minute, you you don't have more than 24 hours in a day. You still, you have 24? I thought 24. you had 48. 168 no? <laughs> in the week, yes, just 24. I love it. And and we all are using that time, you know, the way that, um, you know, we wished, right? And I hear right. some people saying, I don't have enough time. You want me to change the world. I don't have enough time. And what's your response to that question? You know, you can either have excuses or you can have results, but you can't have both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I understand that people have limitations. However, let me say, and we all have limitations and yeah. we all get the option of choice. 
It's easy to say, I don't have enough time. I'm too bombarded with this and that. What if we prioritized and managed our priorities rather than our time? Hmm. What if we put our time and energies toward what matters most and toward affecting change rather than talking about, I'm going to manage my time? Mm -hmm. Like a tip. So, so, so help us with that. You know, people that are watching here today and I, I'm already feeling inspired by you, Cynthia. So, so take us through, you know, what are some of your strategies or tips to, to kind of affect that type of change and, and to start moving in that direction where you're not letting your time manage you, but you're managing your time. I would start with closing your eyes one quiet afternoon and then thinking about if time, money, resources, and you didn't have any obstacles, what would your life be like and who would you be? Not necessarily what have you accomplished, but who are you? Then you write down, this is who I am in my ideal life. Mm -hmm. Then write down, what does it take to be the type of person, how I want to show up in the world? Then you reverse engineer that and say, if this is how I want to show up in the world and the change that I want to affect, the legacy that I want to leave, what do I need to do to do that? And reverse engineer it down to the very minute daily task because your habits done on a daily basis consistently are going to determine where you are in 5, 10, 15 years. It's like compound interest in finance. You don't invest $100,000 a year. You invest a daily amount, and then that compound interest will take you further. Love it. Yeah. And I, and I like when you say, just find the quiet space to kind of think about that. And I even get anxiety when you say, find the quiet space to just think. You know, because I feel like I am my my days are so jam packed and, and overly scheduled and I'm trying to keep my business running in the days of pre COVID and post COVID and all the other things here. And then I've got my family and if I have a spare minute, I'm like, OK, I've got to take care of the family. So I'm shifting from one thing to another. Um, and is this something you do? I mean, is this a is, is this a time you schedule in for yourself or what? what is your advice for? For people like me or others who are kind of like, how do I even find the time to make that time? Right, right. Because sometimes we can feel like a fart in a whirlwind, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> to, to be quite honest, like you've got all these different things and I've got this and yeah. this and this. No, you need that quiet time to sit down and say, here are my priorities. Mm -hmm. Let me manage them and put them into scheduling. We don't forget to take a shower because it's a habit. Right. Mm -hmm. So I read the book Atomic Habits and it talks about how to create new habits, get rid of old habits, and prioritize those habits. Mm -hmm. So if you want to affect change, you've got to go down to those very granular and specific habits. So I schedule everything. I schedule my LinkedIn engagement. I schedule time to read. I schedule time to write. I schedule morning time in the morning. I get up with the routine of my hot tea, my green smoothie, journaling, meditation, prayer, no news, no negativity. Right. Yes. Because that it's hard. we are susceptible to everything. Mm -hmm. And if we want to have a good mindset throughout the day, a mindset of positivity and growth, then we have to be careful what comes in. Mm -hmm. So it's hard enough in this craziness, if you yeah. will, to combat all the things that are thrown at us. Imagine if you didn't have the news in the morning to have to undo that negativity. Right. Try it for 30 days and I promise you'll write me and say, oh my gosh. <laughs> life changer. <laughs> my life. Yeah. It is hard, I think, with the news too, because there's there's one part of me, it's like, I want to know what's going on in the world. I want to know where Michigan is. You know, I want to know where the nation is. I want to understand. And then it gets to a point where, um, you, you know, what news can you trust? And then there's different viewpoints. And even if you go on Facebook nowadays, there's so many different um, points of view. And I'll I'll go in there, I do what I need to do, and I get out quickly. Yeah. Um, Reallocating uh, my time, but I like what you're you're doing is you're really being um, focused about how you're allocating your time throughout the day, and you're making choices, which sounds yeah. like it's a a driving factor for you. There are two things that you have to protect at all costs. Mm -hmm your time and your energy. Mm -hmm. Being a business owner is tough. Mm -hmm. You have the weight of the world on your shoulders 
And if you're not careful, it becomes too much and you get yeah. burned out because you are the chief cook and bottle washer. You've got to do, <laughs> you've got to do accounting. You've got to do this. You've got social media. And right. if you're not careful, it, it can overwhelm you and then you have burnout and then you're no good to anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think this is a common thing you probably see um, too with, I don't want to say just women. I mean, I think anyone who's a business, business owner, but um, you know, maybe in some aspects, women too, we, we try to be everything to everyone, you know, a good wife, wife, daughter, aunt, you know, sister, plus um, entrepreneur, girl boss, you know, all these, and we don't want to like demonstrate that we're not doing great in every area, but then we're kind of burning at both ends. Right. And, and, and it's, it's depleting our energy and there's nothing left for us in there. Yes. Yes, so, I'm susceptible to that too. So what are your you know, tips for, for folks that are watching that are struggling with that and um, you know, how to reclaim some of that energy and how to give yourself permission too, because we, we're trying so hard to please so many people in different areas, but we're not focusing on ourselves. Yes. There's an old saying that says you can't pour from an empty pitcher. Mm -hmm. So if you're not right or if mama's not right, nobody else is going to be. Mm -hmm. You can't give what you don't have. So that goes back to, are you getting adequate quality sleep? Not just sleep, but quality sleep, like yeah. that REM sleep, REM sleep. Mm -hmm. Are you eating well? Are you taking care of your body, whether that's a yoga, meditation, all of those good things to get yourself right so that you can give to others. Mm -hmm. And once you prioritize eight hours of sleep, meditation, focus time, even if it's just quiet time, you don't have to meditate, but quiet time, prayer, whatever it is, right. you are better suited to give to others. You have the energy and the mindset and the positivity to be able to give back. When you deplete yourself of the basic needs, how can you even give yourself, bring your best self to anybody? Mm -hmm. How can you change the world if you're tired? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and being tired and being busy used to be this glam status. I'm so yeah. busy. I'm so tired. I, and yeah. I used to thrive off of that. I used to have a, a uh, screensaver that says, hustlers don't sleep. We nap. Right. And, <laughs> right I would get up at two o'clock in the morning and say, okay, well, I, I'm awake. So it's time to get the day started. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's about efficiency. Yeah. And I am much more efficient. And I think most people are when we are well rested. Yeah, that's a good point. And I struggle with the sleep thing too. And I, I saw there's a, there's a meme or a cartoon floating around somewhere right now. And it's like, um, right now, I mean, we as, you know, if you, if you got a family at home, we're caregivers, you know, I, I've got school age children, so I'm doing, you know, the homeschooling thing, the school's done for the summer, but we still have activity for the social director during the day. And, you know, even like getting my daughter to bed at night, um, after I get her to bed, I'll do a couple more work things. And then I flip on the TV and it's like 11 o'clock at night mm -hmm. and I should be sleeping at that point. I get up at six. So I should be sleeping, Cynthia, and I'll admit I don't, you know, I'll, because I want, I just want that mindless time for myself um, to watch a little bit of TV. I don't watch TV during the day at all. And it's really hard to shut that off. But I am finding I'll, I'll get overly tired some days and then I will go to bed at 10 o'clock some nights and I, and I catch up a little bit on that. Um, do you still struggle with that or are you really good with your, your sleep? I went to a sleep doctor because I have chronic mm -hmm. insomnia. Mm -hmm. and my sleep doctor said, the body loves routine mm -hmm. and thrives off of routine. So I turn off all my electronics one hour before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. I have a set bedtime and a set wake time. It has changed my productivity like crazy. That's great. It's hard in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Very, very challenging because like you, I want that mind numbing activity after a day of grinding. Yes. I just want to just veg out. And mm -hmm. I do veg out, but I also turn it off. So mm -hmm. my workday stops at six o'clock. My workday used to be until 11 o'clock because I manage projects in six time zones. Yeah. I had to respect myself enough to have boundaries. Mm -hmm. So That's I great. have a workday that actually ends. And then mm -hmm. I have a, a reminder on my phone that says, stop working. And then I have another reminder that says, do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's what it takes for me. Mm -hmm. Somebody else may be different. I can't get to where we want to get to within AWSP if I'm not well rested. And for me, that was, that was huge. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about the organization. I mean, how did you 
how did you get things started and how long has it taken you to grow into where you are? And is it just you or do you have a team of people that you're working with? Tell me a little bit about the group. I have a team. I have a team. We have a, a board of directors. I have a chairwoman of the board. Mm -hmm. um, I have chapter leaders around the country. There are a couple of marketing folks on, on staff, um, community manager. We have an online app and um, right. we've got somebody managing that. So okay. back in 2016, I decided I didn't want to work for anybody anymore. Love it. <laughs> and I said, well, what do I know how to do really, really well? And yeah. I said, I can sell my socks off. Yeah. And I said, okay, so what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. I've always worked for someone else selling for them. But then I thought, and they said, you know, in business, there's only two functions within the company, somebody to make it or create it and somebody to sell it. So I figure I've got 50% down. I right. <laughs> of it. So I um, I came up with a hypothesis. I did some work with the lean startup company. And my hypothesis was in a world where traditional sales methods were created by men for men at a time when men made up the entire sales force, how much faster and easier could women get to the top 1% if we had sales approaches that took into account the unique challenges that we faced while Love amplifying the strengths that we have? Love it. And then I got proof of concept and then I put it out there and here we are. Yeah, that's great. So has it been just a linear success story for you or have, have you had some learnings along the way? Anything you want to share with, with the group here? Just when you think you're chugging along and things are great, yeah. life says, how about some COVID-19 for you? All right. Yeah. <laughs> so right. we're doing 120 events per year around the country, wow. around the globe and COVID hit. And so we were not able to do live events. So we had to pivot to virtual events for to keep our members engaged, to provide value to our members mm -hmm. and all those things. So no, it hasn't been linear. Yeah. It's been up and down and all around. And But you know what they say, um, you can either put a period at the end of a sentence or you can use a semicolon. Mm -hmm. I choose a semicolon, mm -hmm. it's a pause. And then keep going. I love it. That's a great expression. And so for you, I'm curious, you went from live in-person events, COVID hit, and then how long did you kind of take a pause before converting and shifting everything to virtual? And, and I'm assuming everything's virtual for you now. Yes, we didn't we didn't pause. It was oh, all great. hands on deck. How can mm -hmm. we do master classes, um, webinars, and we have sponsors for our webinars, so we're engaging our sponsors. There was no pause. Mm -hmm. That's it was great. Full steam ahead. That's great. So yeah, your membership base is yeah. um, you have an obligation to make sure that they're engaged, that they receive what they need to get to the top one percent. And I, yes, COVID was a factor, mm -hmm. but it was only a factor. I wasn't right. going to use it as an excuse to say, "Well, we can't do anything now because well, we can't get together." We got to wait. Yeah. 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 Being a business owner is about pivoting to life's challenges. And you strike me as a as a person too. I think I see you as so successful, Cynthia, and I've always admired you for that. And I, I believe you're a strong person. And I and I feel like you're also very adaptable. Um, you know, I think going into that semicolon statement, you know, some people might see COVID as, oh great, this is it for my business. I'm just gonna have to wait and see, let this roll over and then we'll wait for things to come back. And you were like, all right, here's what we need to do. And you kind of roll up your sleeves and and you you I, I feel you're a very adaptable person. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yes, because I was indoctrinated at a young age by stress. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those things where I said, you can either let life happen to you or you can say, this is what it is. Yeah. We're going to make the best of it. Um, Timber from Inforum. Yeah. Yeah. Me a journal that says when life hands you lemons, make limoncello. Ooh, love it. <laughs> Yes. It's a drink, isn't it? Lemon jello? <laughs> yes. I was gonna say I'm like, that's not lemon jello. Lemon I think that's like a a, 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 a beverage. Like a beverage. beverage. Yeah. I'm like, that sounds yes. quite tasty, actually. <laughs> yes. So um that's how I think of it. Because mm -hmm. if not COVID, there will be something else. Right. So are you going to let life dictate your success? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to use the strengths, knowledge, skills, and abilities that you have? Mm -hmm. to take life by the horns and say, I'm going to make you what I need. Right. Instead of you defining who I am. Right. 
it's a it's a platform for you. So going back to this subject of, you know, we we started out this conversation of if you're not changing the world, what are you doing with your life? How do you feel, you know, so far to date, Cynthia Barnes has changed the world and you know, what what do you think your impacts have been so far? I'd like to think that I am inspiring, motivating, and educating women to believe that the sky is the limit. Mm-hmm. That the top one percent is within with, within reach, and top one percent could be the top one percent of motherhood, of sisterhood, of the leaderboard, of money. Whatever your top one percent is, you have it within you, and all of the resources that you need are within reach to get there. Mm-hmm. I love it, and I'm just going to put this little comment in here right now. Do you guys know Cynthia? Anybody watching here today? Do you know Cynthia? If you do, comment below and tell me if you agree, if you think she's awesome, because I just think she's so awesome. And Yeah, then send me your PayPal account. I'll slip out that money. (laughs) (laughs) This is all impromptu. I'm like, as people are talking, I'm like, oh, she's just awesome. I just love her. And she's just got this, you just got this great light and energy about you, Cynthia. And I I feel like everything you said about yourself, I I agree. I feel like you've inspired so many. Every time I see you speak too, I'm just like, you just, um, you have such great presence. Um, You bring great insights into the group. And I love the fact that, Ne- you know, a negativity or life circumstances has never been something that has, has pulled you back. And you use those things to propel your, yourself forward, your business forward. Um, you and I, I think we share a common belief in that energy moves in one direction. You can, you know, you can focus on the negative and the what if and the who did what and the finger pointing and all these, you know, circumstances. You can complain about things or you can take all that energy and say, OK, what do we need to do next and move yeah. things forward? And sometimes looking back can help you to propel you even further. Yes. You know, I, I don't want to be back in corporate America anymore. So I'm going to drive the heck out of my business. Heck yeah. To continue to blow myself, you know, further, further ahead. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When I was six years old, my daddy sat me down and he was from the Jim Crow South segregation times. Mm-hmm. And um, he grew up with a mindset that life was hard being a black person in America. Yeah. So with that understanding, it was through his lens that he sat me down and he said, you have some challenges as a black girl. There are two strikes against you. So you're going to have to work really hard to be a success. And again, this is through his lens. Yeah. And then he said there, while I'm at it, um, I need to tell you that there are three types of people in the world. Mm-hmm. Those that make things happen, those who, um, wait for things to happen and those who wonder what the hell happened. (laughs) He said, so if you are going to be a success in life, always remember that you're going to have to work twice as hard as everybody else and you're going to have to make things happen. And I've, that stuck with me for decades. That's great. I love it. Yeah, Inspirational. I can see where you get your inspiration from. It's your parents, right? It's your, yes. Oh, they, overcame unsur- insurmountable odds to to make sure that I had the best of everything, the best mm-hmm. education, the best opportunities, and the work ethic mm-hmm. and the unwillingness to accept excuses. Love it. That's really great. Well, you're you're just a, a wonderful all around person. And, and it's really just great to hear from you in person. And not, I feel like I say sometimes I see your words on screen on LinkedIn and other places. I can hear your voice because I've, I've seen you speaking at events, but it's great to like hear you in person here today. So what I'd like to do at this point, Cynthia, if it's okay, we'll shift a little bit here and we'll, we'll see um, the audience comments and questions that are coming in. If you guys have a question for Cynthia, um, drop your questions in the comments and I'm gonna go back through the comments and I'll pull a couple. I've been doing the hello, you know, where are you from initially as we were getting started here. Sure. Um, uh, and read that book, was it Atomic Habits? Was that the book that you mentioned yes. earlier? Yes, yeah, Very good books. So we got Changed some- my life. <laughs> I'll have to look that one up. And then Kathleen, hello, thank you for joining hey, us. You're right around the corner, Kathleen. Uh, we have Olivia who's on. Hello. Olivia, you're becoming a regular on these shows. It's so nice to see your name out in here. Um, Debbie, just finishing up an online workshop with Lynn Gladner. Do you know Lynn? I don't. Lynn, Lynn is in Metro Detroit. I feel like you and Lynn share some common philosophies and Lynn is really focused on make, make meaning as a theme for her podcast and different things and very similar themes in what we're talking about here today. Um, I'm just going to throw a couple of comments here, going to kind of cycle through what we're seeing up here in, in the comments that are coming on. Um, let's see here. 
I love yes. this <laughs> proof yes. of concept of, of key. Lisa, nice to see you online nice here today. To yes, proof of concept is key. You want someone to tell you your baby is ugly because when we're at <laughs> business, owners, we always think this is a great idea and people are going to throw money at it and yeah. then get out there and nobody's buying it. And you think, right. oh, Rick, why isn't it? Why don't you think it's great? I think it's great. Why aren't you buying it? <laughs> That's not going to pay the bills. So here's our here's our first question coming in for you, Cynthia. Susie asked, how long did it take you to adjust to that new routine, turning off the tech and kind of getting into that sleep cycle? Oh, Susie, it was rough. It was rough because I had decades of doing what I wanted to when I wanted to. And now I was implementing discipline with myself. Yeah. And I had to keep my eye focused on the big prize. Mm -hmm. So I would say it took me a good two months to, and I still am challenged because it's fun to stay up and watch the yeah. latest bad boys movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And do you, so, watch, do you watch TV? You just watch it earlier in the night, did you say, or do you not watch TV? I do watch TV occasionally. I don't have cable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know my habits. So if I'm, if I'm, you know, in the evening when I have a do nothing type of thing, yeah, I, force myself to grab a book mm -hmm. because that's my no electronics. I like it. That's good. Yeah. It, yeah. But it's challenging. Cause I, when people say, have you seen the latest episode of this? And I have to say, no. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> like so, I kind of stopped watching TV. Uh, I mean, with kids, you don't get the remote anyways, but um, when I was going back to grad school, yeah. you, you have to give something up and I gave up watching TV so I can get my homework done. And I, and there was probably like, you know, five years of TV shows I missed. And then I, you get out of the mainstream and I'm like, it wasn't that bad missing them. I feel like I've actually gained more. Yes. Um, but then, you know, for me, I've always loved reading. I'm still not quite at the point where I'm reading all the time as I used to, because when you go through a, an education where you have to read all the time, you feel like it's forced upon you. And I'm still like, I'll get back there someday. But yes. you strike me as a reader, Cynthia. You, are you always reading a book? And do you always have a stack of books, what, what you're going to be reading next? Yes. Yeah, so I listen to audiobooks on my jog in the morning or my walk mm -hmm. in the morning or my bike ride, whatever I'm doing. Okay. And I have an hour of reading when I get back. Um, okay. And then I have um, an hour that I do recreational reading in the evening. That's great. Gosh, you're inspiring me. I just feel like I just took a deep breath. because I was like, I just feel like she has space in her mind to process. And I'm like, I need that. I need that. So, um, so Susie, going back to, uh, was it Lemoncello? She Lemoncello, said, yeah, she's a lemon. That would be delicious. I like that. And I think there's now a there's a hashtag limoncello. Here we go, adulting. Oh yes. wow! I love it. I love it. Keeping on with the theme, um, when life gives you lemons, make limoncello. Yes, yes. It's good. So um, here's another question coming in. Um, I'm not sure who this is. It's it's if you have your privacy settings set up where you don't have a completely public profile, we can't see your name and your your username on Streamyard because it's pulling from public information. Ah, okay. But the person is asking, what other books would Cynthia recommend for work life balance? Anything come to mind? So work life balance is almost impossible <laughs> because if we think about it, it's more like a work life integration. Yeah because you have to be intentional about integrating your life and your work. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have any books on work-life balance. Um, actually, yes. Um, Stephen Covey's, The um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I took a Stephen Covey course way back in the day and I'm right. like, yeah, way, way, way back in the day. <laughs> and they talked about, you know, he talked about managing your priorities rather than your time. So I would pick that one up. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. That's a great book. And I'll make sure to, to drop that in the comments here later. Thank you for recommending that. Um, we also had Nicole Jennings. And Nicole, I just saw Nicole on Facebook Live. Um, and then she came on to LinkedIn Live. So thank you, hey. Nicole, for, for joining over here. Again, right around the corner. Yeah, we're all in, in the area here. Um, Kathleen asks, Cynthia, what are you currently reading? Ooh, I'm currently mm -hmm. reading A Murder Mystery by Nelson DeMille. Ooh, very good. Mm -hmm. I am rereading Atomic Habits. Um, I'm reading a book on community. Mm -hmm. I'm also reading a book on virtual training. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the other one you got a lot of books you're reading right now. <laughs> yes. yes. Are and they in different areas of the house? So when you're in a spot, you're picking them up. And because I've got um, how to perfect panels right here on my my desktop. Okay. Uh, atomic what perfect panels about is that like virtual panels and stuff or what is that? Yeah, how to run how to run a panel discussion that's lively, interactive, and it's not just uh, ho hum. Okay. 
we do panel discussions every two weeks. And I said, well, if I'm going to do them, I need to get good at them. Okay. So uh, Mimi Brown actually re recommended that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I actually may have a referral um, opportunity for you. I'm going to send something. I had somebody reach out to me recently and said, hey, we're looking for a blog contributor to talk about virtual speaking. And I think she alluded to panels. And I, uh, I, I'm going to send you some information. You might be a, a better person than I on that. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a reader, but I'm not a big reader. So, so the book I'm reading right now is actually my friend John Aspirian wrote a book called Content DNA. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I bought the book and I keep it in my car when my son goes to karate, they're starting to meet out in the parking lot. So when my son goes to karate, we go like two to three times a week. I have the book in the car and during that half hour is when I read like a chapter or two. Yes. Um, but it's hard to like shut off the phone and do it. But I love the book. It's such a great read to yes. do. So yeah. there's the content code by Mark Schaefer. Mm -hmm. You should pick that one up too. Okay. Check it out. And we had another suggestion for a book um, from Susie, Gift of Imperfection. Have you read that? Uh, Brene Brown? Are you a Brene Brown fan? Susie? I am. Okay. I am. I haven't read any of her books. I keep hearing um, all the great things about her, but I've still got to pick one up. Um, I, I was TED Talk. Which one? Start with her TED Talk. TED Talk. Okay, yes. I'll do that. I'll check that out. So I think it's on Netflix. Oh, so very good. I think I got through all the questions. I'm just going to pop over to LinkedIn right now because sometimes in StreamYard we don't see all of the comments that are coming in. Uh, okay. Technology is great, but it's imperfect. I think in in some aspects. Um, so in terms of human element. What's that? You still need that human element. You do. And um, what's interesting, too, is when we go through the live streaming process, too, there's like a 30 second or so delay. So I might say, what questions do you guys have and what comments? Um, and they they come in a little and it's like, OK, it comes in 30 seconds late, but then people are typing them. So it might take an additional you know, 30 seconds to a minute for the comments to come in there. Sure. So I'm just popping over. So we've got 144 views um, so far of our, of, our, of our live stream. So thank you guys so much for participating yeah. in the conversation. Yeah, there are there's more comments in here that aren't on here um, as well. Let's see here. Jeff Young. Hello, Jeff. Thank you for Hi, joining Jeff. us here today. Uh, Jeff is in Columbus, Ohio, uh, nice. in the Midwest here. So thanks for joining us. Um, Olivia says, yes, in life, are you a player or a spectator? And I think that's going back to um, the, the inspiration you heard from your dad. Um, what was it again? Are you are you watching? I, I'm, I'm not going to repeat it correctly. So can you repeat that for us again, Cynthia? Sure. There are three types of people in the world, those who make things happen, those who wait to, for things to happen, and those who wonder what the hell happened. <laughs> there you go. I love it. And you're you're the kind that makes things happen, Cynthia. I definitely can see that from you. Got to do it. Got to do yeah. it. So Lisa, sharing respect enough, yourself enough to, to have boundaries. Absolutely agree with you guys there. Um, I think we did get the other comments coming in here. So it looks like we've got just about everything in here. So we're going to move to um, kind of, you know, wrap up our conversation here in a few minutes, Cynthia. Before we do so, I just want to see if you'd like to offer any final comments to the group here. And for those who maybe joined us a little bit late, if you're just popping on now, we were talking today, um, Cynthia is talking a little bit about if you're not changing the world, what are you doing with your life? And, and she gave us some different strategies to consider. So would you like to kind of recap some of those thoughts? And then I'll give you the opportunity, any final shout outs or any resources you'd like to share with sure. folks as well. If everyone were to step into their power, mm -hmm. we would be able to affect so much change. Ava DuVernay says that the problems in the world that we face are so huge and they and they seem insurmountable. Mm -hmm. And we all have what it takes to overcome them. So if we're talking about systemic racism, we're talking about COVID-19, we're talking about anything that, that, that comes to us, whether you're political or apolitical, we have what it takes to be the change that we want to see in the world. We have to realize our power and then we have to step into it. It's going to take action, but you've got to start by realizing, you know what? I can do more. Mm -hmm. Find out what that is and do it. No excuses. I love it. That's great. Like, don't just be sitting on the side. And you still hear so many people, they'll just kind of sit and complain about things. And then I'm like, if you want to do something, it's kind of like your vote is your voice, right? Get out there and vote yeah, or participate or support someone or reach out. And, you know, what I've done a little bit for my business in, in the times of COVID here is, you know, I've, I've taken, you know, we've all kind of taken a little bit of a hit in mm -hmm. terms of business, but I'm like, what can I do right now? Okay, well, there's a lot of job seekers, so I'm going to launch this job seeker webinar series. I've got LinkedIn Live as a platform, so I'm going to reach out to my network and handpick wonderful people like Cynthia that I can have on the show and shine the spotlight on. 
And I love it. I mean, we can all be the change that we want to see in the world, but we've got to be an active part in that. We can't just say we, you know, we have to actually do something yes. um, to be a part of that. So really wonderful thoughts. All right. So to, to wrap us up here, um, I know people can connect with you or they can find you on LinkedIn. I'm going to pull your profile up on screen in just a second here, Cynthia. Are you open to new invitations or what's your, what's your philosophy on connecting with new folks on LinkedIn? They can always follow me. Okay. Awesome. Yes. So when we go to your profile, do you have the default, the follow button, or is it the connect button? It's the follow button. Okay, awesome. So they can follow you. And what does that mean? For I, I know, but for people watching the, the broadcast here today, what does it mean when you follow someone on LinkedIn versus connect with them? Following someone on LinkedIn means that you will see their status updates in your feed. Okay. Connecting with someone gives them access to the behind the scenes, kind of like pulling back the curtains to their contact info and things like that. So mm -hmm. as... The, as, a, as a LinkedIn influencer, I choose the follow button so that so it makes it easier for people to to see what's in my feed. And, and I see that on your profile, LinkedIn top sales influencer. So what does that mean? And how did you how did you get that designation? That's from LinkedIn, isn't it? It is from LinkedIn. Yes. Yeah. So LinkedIn published their top 15 sales influencers for 2020. And mm -hmm. I was honored to receive that that designation. That's awesome. So you guys need to follow Cynthia because she is all that, you know, she's she's been named not just by people like me and her network to be awesome, but by LinkedIn has tapped her on the shoulder and hey, and they've said you're one of 15. Is that what they said? 15 yes. people, mm -hmm. 15 people in 2020. She is a top sales influencer. Um, and I've learned so much from you, Cynthia. And I just want to say, you. you know, thanks for, for joining today. It was a delight speaking with you yeah. and learning more about you. I share so many of your philosophies. So thank you so much for joining yes. today. Thank you for having me. You are truly amazing. And I love your, is it monthly now, the LinkedIn rock stars? I do. Right? Yep. And you're a rock star too. You're on yes. there. You yes. are one of, I think one of the originals. Because When I first started, it was like a way of, um, you know, how can I, how can I improve my efforts on LinkedIn? And I knew about you. I'm like, oh, I want to be like Cynthia, you know, and, and I, and I put the people on the list and I follow them. Um, yeah. So I originally, it was weekly and it was everybody. And then I split it out into a LinkedIn trainer list and a non LinkedIn trainer list. And then I had like the hundred thousand plus. So I had three lists. So it's once a month, each of those lists publishes. Um, but it's three weeks out of the month that it's, it's on a amazing. Thing, so. It's amazing. I thought about doing that for um, women in sales. You should. That'd be a great I should. I should. And I like the fact that you put the how to in your yeah. one of your latest posts. <laughs> I, did, yeah. I thought that's true leadership when you when you realize that old adage of they print new money every day. Right. And mm -hmm. what's for you was for you. So those true leaders that I respect don't hold on to their secrets for right. fear that someone else is going to be more successful. They give them freely out into the universe, yeah. knowing that what's for them is for them and that you give, there's an old saying, you can't mm -hmm. receive with a closed fist. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I love that about you. No, and it was funny because I put that out there and I've had, um, there's been sp several spring offs of this list, but I had several people reach out to me and say, can you create an Excel template for me? And I don't get paid for this, you guys. This is just something I'm doing out of the goodness of my heart. And I'm like, um, you know, I, I don't share the template, um, but you can look at the sheet and you can look at the column headings and it pretty much shows you, you know, how to pull through. Maybe eventually I'll create a blog with a downloadable template. But for now, um, I love shining the spotlight on, on rock stars like you, you know, people like you, Cynthia, who are very giving, engaged with your network. You're always shining the spotlight on others. You're always kind of thinking about paying it forward and, and giving uh, freely of the resources that you have. So I know I'll see you more online. And I look forward to seeing you in person at some point. Do you have any upcoming conferences in person at this point planned? Or is it all, are we all kind of waiting right now on that? We're kind of waiting right now. Our sponsors have said, we want the in-person events, but we don't want them until 2021. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody's kind of feeling like we, we've been pushing that goal off. And the analogy I like to use is when I was little, we would drive to Pennsylvania to see family. And we'd leave, you know, we were little kids. We were leaving the driveway and I'd be like, how long is it going to be? And my dad would say, oh, only a little bit. And we'd drive for an hour. Are we there yet? No, just a little bit longer. And and if he had said it's going to be six to eight hours in kid terms, we would have gone crazy. Yes. Um, for us, it's kind of like, you know, we've gone so far three months. We can go another three to seven. We don't want to, but we want to be safe at this point. Right? And be alive. Yeah. Be alive. That's the most important thing. Yeah. We build our community along we the way. We do. We do. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we, we showed your LinkedIn URL. Um, remind you guys to check out NAWSP National uh, Association. Help, help me out here, Cynthia. I'm sorry. Women's Sales Professionals. 
National Association of Women Sales Professionals, check out her website. And then just one final plug for me, um, check out mellermarketing.com slash subscribe to get notification of upcoming LinkedIn live interviews like yes. these. I also publish LinkedIn strategy tips and a lot of other great information. So thank you again, Cynthia. Um, thank you. Seeing you. This right. has been fun. When we are able to get together, I would love to do a latte. Oh, I would love that. That'd be yes. so much fun. Yeah. Yes. And you've got some great coffee shops in Royal Oak. Um, the office coffee shop uh, is one of my go-to's over one there. One of my favorites. Yes. Yeah. They're still open though, aren't they? They are. Yeah. So they I just got to get, I got to get brave enough to meet somebody for coffee. I've done virtuals, but I haven't been able to venture. I'm not, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> Maybe we'll just get some gusto together and say, you know what, we're going to do it. Bite the bullet. We'll do it. Yes, we'll do it. I look forward to it. All right, Cynthia, thanks a latte for joining today. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, stay safe and stay healthy. If you happen to be watching this in playback, still leave a comment below. And then I'm also just going to remind you to please click to share this video with your network. Tag Cynthia when you do so. And um, be sure to join us on future editions of Social Media Pie. Thank, thank you again and have a great day. Yes, thank you.